today we're going to talk about titrations. And we've talked about titrations before in terms of stoichiometry. You know that titration is usually an acid and a base, and it's a neutralization reaction. So that's kind of the general idea of this. You take an acid plus a base, and you form a salt and water. Now, when I say you form a salt, remember, I don't mean literally table salt. I mean some ionic solution. Ionic compounds are really salts in terms of chemistry, a positive ion and a negative ion that's neutral in terms of pH. Up until this point, we were always adding a strong acid and a strong base like hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. And we were winding up right in the middle with a pH of seven, literally just salt water. Now that we know things about weak acids and weak bases, we can do titrations where we do not wind up at a pH of seven. You can add a weak acid and a strong base and wind up higher than seven. Or a strong acid and a weak base and wind up lower than seven in a titration. Here's the key to a titration. Moles of acid equals moles of base. That's what we mean in this case by neutral. And that's where we reach what we call the equivalence point. Because they're equivalent. And at that point, we see a rapid change in pH. And we're going to look at some graphs and discuss these graphs in just a second. But does this make sense to you? To some extent, yes, right? It's going to be stoichiometry. We're going to be looking at moles of acid and moles of base and when those are equal and what happens to the pH at that point. And that's a titration. Okay, let me erase and we'll look at these graphs. So this first graph is a strong acid with a strong base. This is the one that we've seen before. You start, and remember, titrations usually have a beaker and a burette. We probably, you haven't, if you're a senior, you've done this in Chem 1A, right? I don't remember. We don't remember. <laughs> Juniors you didn't get to because we did acids and bases at home. So in a titration, what you do is you start with a beaker of usually your acid and you put an indicator in your acid. We'll talk about indicators in a minute. And you add base from a burette slowly. And the, way, the reason that you're doing that is because you want it to go slow so that you can tell when the equivalence point has been reached. And that's when your indicator changes color. Okay, so if we're measuring pH as we go through our titration, we're measuring the pH of this solution in the beaker. And we start with 100% acid. So a strong acid starts out really low pH, one, right? And then over time, the X, this is the pH, this is the volume of base added. And I add base slowly. And for a long time, 
my pH doesn't really change because I have a lot of acid and a little bit of base and I see no change in pH or a very slight change, a rise in pH on the scale of like one. Maybe I go up to two, one and a half. And then all of a sudden, I see this spike. This is the equivalence point where 25 milliliters of base has been added. And as soon as I add 25 milliliters of base, it spikes all of a sudden up to seven because it has been neutralized. It goes from a pH of like 1.5 all the way up here actually to like nine, 10, really quick. Because in that moment, I've gone from having more acid than base to, for a very small instant, having equal acid and base. But then I add one more tiny amount of base, and now I've made it a completely basic solution. Because I was like acid, 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 then all of a sudden, water, basically. And then one more tiny drop, now it's basic. So basic, right? So my pH jumps, and then it levels off to some point that is the diluted base at that point. Do these titration curves make sense to you? Okay, this one, a weak acid and a strong base, I start out with a higher pH, because it's a weak acid. It's not gonna have a pH of one. I add base, 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 base. The pH changes quicker here. I have more of a slope. It doesn't say flat as long because my base is so strong. And then I reach the equivalence point with a pH slightly higher than seven because my base is stronger than my acid. If I have moles of weak acid equal to moles of strong base, my pH is higher than seven. Um, because there, that would require a base that has a pH of 14 and there aren't very many bases. Like even sodium hydroxide doesn't have a pH of 14. And then it levels off at some pH up here that's basic. Okay, bottom left, strong acid, weak base. Starts out down here low, one, strong acid. Stays very flat for a long time. Not a lot of slope here. Adding a weak base to a strong acid does not change that pH very much. And then I do get my slight equivalence point here. It's not as pronounced as this one. And my equivalence point pH is less than seven. Because now I have moles of strong acid equal to moles of weak base, and my pH is less than seven. And then it levels off just barely above seven. The last one is a weak acid with a weak base. Still winds up at seven, but it is not very pronounced. You won't see anything this complex on the AP test. It's not pronounced enough for you to be able to tell where the equivalence point is, basically. Questions? 
anticipate graphs like this on a multiple choice. They'll tell you something about a titration and you'll choose the graph that would match the titration. Anticipate a titration problem in the free response. Something about titration. Yep. So in a strong acid, acid titrated with a strong base, at one, are we talking about like 100% acid or can you never have 100% acid? When we're talking about like a pH of one, that's still yeah. like one molar hydrochloric acid. Okay. Like the acid that I can buy that is like the strongest acid that like comes from a catalog is 15.8 molar. So that's still only 15.8 moles of acid per liter of water. It's not like just acid. Most acids, in fact, are vapor at room temperature, and you have to dissolve them in water to make a solution. And they're highly dangerous. Like, acid vapor, we're not even going to mess with that. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering if that was like a theoretical thing, like they're saying, if you have... Acids are solutions. Okay. Because you need those ions to make it acidic anyway, so it has to be dissolved in water. Questions otherwise. And when I talk about acid vapor, I'm talking about then you breathe it. We know that our bodies are full of water. Our lungs are full of water vapor. You breathe it in, it ionizes, and now you have all these hydronium ions in your lungs. And so you remove, die. So remove the water and you're good. No. You do not want to boil acid and concentrate it. Not a good idea. No. <laughs> like you never ever. I've acid. never ever ever concentrated acid more than what was given to me. I wouldn't even consider it. So, with like someone who's a professional. I mean, yes. There's like industries where concentrated acid is necessary. And can where you just die because they just. No, they have like hazmat suits and safety equipment that I don't. Oh. Have a need for. I didn't know there was someone like accidentally someone breathes in acid and it's just like. Whoops. I mean, I'm sure at some point, yes, that's happened, but no. That's why that happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, indicators. We put an indicator in our acid so that as we're adding base, it changes color and we can tell in an experiment when we've reached the equivalence point. And indicators are pH sensitive. So there are different colors depending on the pH. So this first one, methyl orange, is red and acid, and then it turns yellow and base. And that color change happens about a pH of 5 to 6. So this is good when your acid is stronger than your base, and your equivalence point is going to wind up less than 7. Methyl red is similar, except it has a slightly higher pH range, but it goes from red to yellow. Litmus, this is one that you're familiar with. You've probably seen or used litmus paper in middle school science where you dip the little piece of paper in and you find out if it's acidic or basic. It is red and acid, and it's blue and base, and that color change happens right in the middle, about seven, seven to eight, which is why we use it, because it has that perfect dividing line between red and blue. The most common indicator we use for strong acid, strong base, is phenolphthalein. It's colorless in acid, and it turns pink all the way up to, like, magenta in base. And it's those shades that help us determine the strength of the base. And it has a pH range of 9 to 10. First, what? Um, they're, like, in a 3 to 4 range. Like orange juice? So like if you drink acid, you wouldn't die? No. My favorite drink is full of acid. 
Here you go. Phosphoric acid. It's a weak acid. Most of those that we're talking about are weak acids. Citric acid, weak acid. Phosphoric acid, weak acid. So like the proteins and the weak acid. Yes. Then, so like the difference between like one number and another is like in units? Yeah, magnitudes. Because we're talking about log base 10. Okay, then why are those like a whole number range? Because that's a color change that we're trying to look for. And really and truly, if, if I was a chemist in a professional lab doing a titration, I would not use an indicator. I would use a pH meter and track the pH as I went. Oh. But indicators are useful for like a general titration to see where you've reached the end point. Okay. Good question though. Okay, so strong acid, strong base, you can use almost any indicator you want because that color change is going to happen somewhere in the middle. You'll see it happen. Weak acid, strong base, phenolphthalein. That's why we used it for our vinegar and hydrochloric acid titration in Chem 1A if you were a senior. Do you remember it? No. Some kids had like a really light pink, some kids had like a really magenta purple. I don't know. Don't you know like broth like drinking it? No, you could see it in acid. Oh, yeah. And it like turned yellow and it was really bad. I miss those days. Um, strong acid, weak base, methyl orange. Okay, that's it for today. Questions, comments, concerns? No? Okay, so here are your reminders. This week we'll finish this unit. We're going to do buffers tomorrow and buffers Friday. Buckle up for buffers. Monday uh, will be kind of a work day. Tuesday and Wednesday will all be together in class, and I'm just going to work tons of acid-base problems all together. I might have you work some, I'll work some, we'll do examples, Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll be nice to be together. Thursday, FRQ. Friday, multiple choice, because we're all together. The next week, we'll start Unit 9. We will do Unit 9 for two weeks, and then spring break. Hopefully we make it. And then it's time to review. Is there a possibility for us to go to Philly back in the morning? I'm sorry, is there a possibility for us to go back to uh